Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got landopia.com CEO, Eric, Chat Not Pro, Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We've got Tate Litchfield, the man, the myth, the soon-to-be a daddy from <laughs> FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Uh, we have a new member on the panel, Nat Bruno, hashtag yes, vanlife.com. Nat Bruno living the dream. Yep. I want to be outside playing, but I'm here with you guys. See, I'm, I'm surprised he's not doing this while he's like, you know, parasailing. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, you might have heard of him, landmoto.com, scotttodd.net. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and your Facebook postings. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, by the way, geek pay is stable. I don't know. Is everybody using geek pay and, and enjoying it? Yep. We're loving it. It's, it's, yep. it's really gotten to a point where we, we're getting our support dialed in. Um, it's pretty stable. Uh, so... We're gonna start ramping that bad boy up, and then do another, another, another big feature uh, addition. So, if you want to learn more about GeekPay, go to GeekPay.io, and uh, we'll get you a demo. Well, let's uh, let's start the roundtable. We got a, a few topics. The first topic I think we should talk about, uh, especially because Nat's on, and he's kind of a a geeky guy. And um, if you're gonna live like Nat Bruno, uh, Nat, kind of just fill in the the panel how you live. Uh, so I live in a van. Um, I travel from state to state, wherever I want to live, basically. I just pop in, park literally on the side of the street sometimes, and uh, sometimes set up shop or other times having fun in a, in a new city, outside surfing, skiing, uh, you name it, and I'm out there. So Nat, through land investing, has his passive income exceed his fixed expenses. He's totally free. But to be able to do what he does, it's really important to have systems in place. So, you know, it's not like turning on a light switch. So I want to ask Eric Peterson, when you first created your first system, what, what was it like? Like, what was that process like for you, Eric? Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, it's oftentimes, you know, I think we find ourselves just saying, well, you know, this task is only going to take a couple minutes. Um, I'll just take care of it myself, you know, um, where, it, cause if you're going to create a process for it, it might take you a couple hours. Um, and then you got to train someone to do that and make sure they're doing it the way you want it done. Um, but the reality is once you create that process, um, it just makes your life so much easier to be able to, to pass that off to somebody and, you know, if they don't work out, pass it off to the next person and, uh, you know, just kind of oversee that process. Yeah. Tate Litchfield, how about you? You know, uh, pretty much the same thing. I'll just reiterate what Eric said. It, it, you got to spend some time working on it, making sure that your system is bulletproof. And then once it's bulletproof, you pass it on to a VA. If that VA doesn't end up working out, you can just simply forward those same instructions on to somebody new and, that will tell you right away if you're if you're uh, if you're bulletproof or not because they can either complete the task or they won't be able to. And if they need further clarification, then you've got work to do. So, in my opinion, outsourcing a system is the ultimate test to see if it actually is efficient or not. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Nat Bruno, how about you? So I go very much by uh, Ari Mizell's, um automate first if you can and then outsource but i ultimately uh shoot and then aim or fire then aim basically so i write the system and i send it off to a va it is not bulletproof it is not it's pretty rough typically and then i let them kind of poke holes on it so when they come back with questions i improve and fix the system and then hopefully it becomes bulletproof, but ultimately it's, it's an ongoing process for me. Now, how much time do you spend in Zapier? Oh, I love it. Uh, easily my favorite, uh, software that I pay for hands down. I have, uh, 
20 or 25 different zaps, I think. So. Right now, what's your favorite zap? Uh, some of them that I just created that I absolutely love is when a lead comes in, uh, it oftentimes will hit my email box from Craigslist, from um, somebody calling in or texting. Uh, it'll go to my email box or Landwatch, for example. And I have an automatic zap that I just send that email to uh, a Zapier email address and then a whole bunch of things happen. Throws it in my CRM, throws it in uh, MailChimp for an email newsletter, and then it also sends it off to a VA to call them back and contact them via email and uh, phone. I, I love that. Scott Todd, I think Nat Bruno might have just dropped the Zapier mic on you. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't know. Like, so who do you have calling the? Uh, who do you have calling making the calls for you? So I use uh, on-demand service, Fancy Hands. Okay. All right. So you give them a script to call to use and yep. call. It, so it automatically pops into a spreadsheet, and then they call off of that spreadsheet. And sometimes it'll be one lead. There'll some be, sometimes be multiple leads that they'll call. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I would I would say Mark I'd say that uh, you know Nat, Nat talked about Ari Mizell's um, kind of strategy to automate first and then to uh, delegate, and I I take one additional step um, before that and that's to eliminate right like I'm always looking to see what can I eliminate every single thing, it's amazing like even though you're building your own business you you create crap that you just to do it because you 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 do it and that's how in in a large company that's how stuff just gets started because well somebody did it once and then it continued on so before i try to automate it uh i do look to see can i eliminate this first and if i can't then i will automate it and if i don't know how to automate it today or if i can't figure out how to automate it then i will give it to a va i'll delegate that out so my strategy is eliminate um, automate, delegate. And then if I can't figure out how to do a piece of that, then I'll just drop all the way back to, to the delegate piece as, and then I'll work backwards trying to figure out how I can automate it or I can eliminate it. Scott, give us an example of, of a, of a task you eliminated recently. Ah, come on, Mark. Let's see. Um, so I, I had, um, so what I did was for, for my salespeople, we had a, a um, we had a, well, I guess this is more of the automate piece, but it also goes to the eliminate too. So what would happen is sh they would create, I had like this Google sheet created and they would go in and they'd write down all their sales. Okay. And then what would happen is I would go in there when it came time to pay and then I would issue the check and it would pay it. Okay. But that meant that I had to go in there and kind of, um, you know, do, do, do something with it. Right. And I had to check it and, and everything. So what I did was I created, I created some automation that says, Hey, when someone is paying their bill, put it into an air table, you know, that tip of the week from a few weeks ago. So that, that spreadsheet gets populated automatically through uh, automation. Okay. And then what it would mean is I don't have to go in there and I don't have to go look at it. And then what I did was I basically said, uh, pay through lob. Okay. So then when I hit, when I hit the, uh, a button to pay on Airtable, it issues a check to lob. And then when it issues that check to lob, it's just one less thing I have to do. I don't have to print out the check anymore. I, I love that. I love that. Um, Tate and I have been using lob for a while to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Paying yeah. property taxes and, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, Eric, well, Peterson. you know, we have to, I got to stop you in LG pass, which is what we use to automate our businesses. The developers are actually working on a lob payment so that you hit the button, boop, pay the bill and it will issue a payment to your seller, uh, through lob. I love it. How about property Coming. taxes? Uh, that might be the next one, but for now we're starting off with the pay the seller. I love it. That's so, it's so good. LG pass is amazing. And it's so simple to use. Um, Eric Peterson, how, how do you actually like stop, step back and be like, okay, I'm going to create a system now, right? And like, like I have a hard time of just 
stopping. Like I want to go, 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 go. And then I get it done. I'm like, wait a second. I, that just took me five minutes. Um, and that five minutes I could probably eliminate if I just took, you know, an hour to go step by step and then create a system. Um, but it, it takes effort to actually step back and stop. How do you do it, Eric? Um, I think one of the easiest ways is to, you know, kind of address your biggest pain point, you know, in the moment. So, you know, if this week or today or whatever, you know, your biggest pain point is, you know, X, um, start building the process for that so that you can, you know, find a way to get that done. Um, that's, that's probably the biggest way I've done it so far is just to address those things that I'm just sick of doing, you know, I don't want to do it anymore or I don't have the time to, to keep up with it, for example. Yeah. How about you, Tate? What do you do? It comes down to time. I mean, time's so valuable right now. And, you know, once it starts eating into my time and it's a skill that I recognize can be outsourced, it, it's gone. It's off the plate immediately because I'd rather have time to, you know, do whatever. Maybe it's just watch more TV or something, but I'd rather have more free time than sit there and do certain aspects of the business. I want to ride my bike a lot. So yeah, or maybe it'll be hang out with my kids soon. So anytime I can create time, that's when it gets, you know, systematized and outsourced. Nat, considering that, you know, you're doing all these crazy lifestyle adventures. Um, how do you, uh, you know, how do you find the time to even create systems? Uh, I think it's been kind of beaten into me over the years. I I hate doing things twice. I, anytime I'm constantly find myself doing something more than once, I say I need to automate or outsource this immediately. Or like Scott said, eliminate it completely. Um, so I'm always asking myself, how can I create a system around this to remove it from remove me from the uh, the task? I love it. Scott Todd, before we go on to the next uh, panel discussion, I just want to ask you, what is your criteria for when you think a VA is just not working out? You created the system and then you trained them and then you say, okay, it's not working out. What, what's your criteria for that? Well, like if you, if you only have one VA, it will be hard for you to even understand this, but you, know, you, should, you should have more than one. And then you should, you should have at least two for every job. One, because it will bulletproof you in case uh, they decide to pick up and move to a part of the Philippines that doesn't have internet connection because their, their grandparents are ill. And then all of a sudden they come back, you know, 12 days later, one all the time while you're wondering if they got washed off to sea in a tsunami, right? Uh, that really happened to me, by the way. It's documented in a periscope. Uh, but the guy did come back. He didn't get washed out the sea, which is a good thing because he's, he is my favorite VA. Uh, but you should have more than one. And then what's happening is it's always a test, right? Like every, every assignment is a test. How long did this take? And I'm always telling, um, I'm always telling VAs, like asking them, like, how long did it take you to do that? Oh, it took me 35 minutes. No, no, no. I need this done in 30 minutes, right? Like it's managing VAs is, is not like a passive activity. You, you've got to keep asking them. You got to keep prodding them. How long did it take you? Okay, I want this done in 30 minutes. Can you do it in 30 minutes? Or if not, how can you get to 30 minutes? And if your standard on a particular task is 30 minutes and they continue to take, you know, more than that, well, then you have a, either, you, either your process is flawed uh, but now you're comparing, you're comparing two VA side by side because if one VA can do it in a 30-minute standard and the other's taking 40 minutes, well, then you know that it's the VA and not the process. Right, right. And, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't plug our own VA program, vas.thelandgeek.com, where we're taking our own existing processes, training the VAs so you don't have to. But well, it is that, right that, now in beta. Th that was really smooth, Mark. Was that nice? Yeah. A ABS, always be selling. But let's move on to a favorite topic of ours, shiny object syndrome, right? We all listen to podcasts. We all read blog posts. And, you know, if, you, like, if you're like me and you had, you know, let's say a tough sales day, right? 
maybe FBA by Amazon is better, right? <laughs> or maybe, you know, ATM investing is better or assisted living, right? It doesn't, I don't know, but it's always something might, like, it's just the grass is always greener syndrome, right? So Eric Peterson, how do you stay focused and stay away from the shiny object syndrome? I feel like Stephen A. Smith right now from ESPN. Um, you know, part of it is I don't listen to a lot of other stuff um, to, to be distracted like that. And, um, you know, I, I try to focus my, my reading, my listening, all those things kind of around land investing in some you know, shape or form, um, whether that's, you know, building business or sales or, you know, strictly just land investing. Um, so that's, that's one way I do it. And then the other way is, you know, when something does catch my attention like that, um, I, I try to, you know, logically assess the situation, you know, consider that if I, invest that same amount of time into land investing, which I already know how to do and I know how to be successful at it, you know, is it really worth it? Um, and, you know, just try to keep a, a level head about it and, and not be distracted. So. Tate Litchfield, how about you? Ah, uh, this is a tough one. Um, you know, I guess it comes back to, I know what I know and I know how to buy and sell raw land, even though the other options sound really exciting and, and really interesting, I don't know how to do those. And so part of me doesn't want to take on a job of learning how to do that other stuff. And the other part of me says, well, why fix it if it's not broken? Land is good. <laughs> the market's strong. People are buying. The phone's ringing. Why do I want to take on another set of responsibilities? So for me, it's all about just you know, I have to constantly kind of take a step back and say, listen, I got it pretty good. I, I'm in the right place right now. I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of this or leave this behind me. So for me, it's just that constant reminder. All right, Nat Bruno, you're on a double black diamond in Banff and you're about to go down. And before you go down, you read a blog post, you need multiple streams of income, right? Well, I say, what do you do? How do you avoid I say, it? I say, yes, you may be right. But I'm only focusing on one thing. Um, I've put a lot of constraints in my daily life and it may end up sounding restrictive, but actually the constraints uh, inevitably set you free. So I, I did run three businesses at once and it was unbelievably stressful. So now I say I can only have one business at one time. So uh, the one thing by Gary Keller is a great example of that. What is the one thing, uh, that I can do right now that will make everything else either easier or unnecessary. So that for me is land investing and I am not focusing any of my time on any other businesses or any other opportunities until it is up, up and running completely automated. Like you say, 90% without me. Yeah, I mean, we do have a compelling argument. In fact, we even created a podcast called the Best Passive Income Model Podcast, so, uh, which makes the argument every single podcast. Uh, Scott Todd, I know you have shiny object syndrome. You're, you're, you, Scott probably just, like, as we were talking, like, started, like, a drone business. Like, I did not. I did not, right? I try, I try to be very – because, look, it, when, you listen, when you listen to anybody talk, they, they all say, you know, multiple streams of income, right? And then what happens is uh, you, get, you get the plates spinning the way that you want them to. And then, you know, you feel like, okay, I can take on more. I can go do more. And I think that what happens is um, I think it's just human nature to kind of want to test the waters a little bit. You know, let me test the water over here or let me see. Because um, if you don't, like, if you're not open to new experiences, well, then you'll never be like, like Nat out being able to be out on the road because you'd be like, no, this is, this is my world. This is what I live in. This is what I know. And then you become the person who's, who's um, doing that same job for the next 40 years, right? And that's, that's so I, what I like to do is I like to kind of explore other things. But 
what I do is I really try to explore something with the mindset of, is there something here that I can take and bring back to my business to make it even stronger? Uh, so I think it's okay to like, look, look at other things, but with the mindset that I've got to keep this core business running. And at the same time, is there things that I can do that I can enhance what I'm already doing with my land business? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, that brings us to our, our third and final topic because it is the dog days of summer. And I don't know about you, but my pool looks really good some, sometimes. And, you know, and you wake up and the kids are, they don't have to get up and, you know, they do have to get up. Well, they get up later and like, you want to sleep in, your kind of routine gets messed with. And then it's like, do I really want to work today? How they do want you to go stay on motivated? Vacation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm taking July off, but um, I'm, I'm sort of like a, uh, you know, the exception, I think. Like, you know, we, we all can't be Nat Bruno. Um, but Eric Peterson, how do you stay motivated the dog days of summer? Um, you know, I think for me, it's, it's a matter of having established habits and routines um, that I, you know, just am, am set in doing. Um, so, uh, you know, I just always come back to that. And, you know, if I don't feel like working for the day, it's kind of like, well, you know, you've got to do these things today. And, you know, that's what's going to keep the business moving, keep it running. And whether you feel like it or not, that's just part of the, you know, day to day, I guess. Um, but uh, that's, that's how I do it. Just have a routine and, and stick with it. So yeah, the power of habits. Um, someone should write a book about that. Oh, wait, Charles Duhigg did. Uh, Tate Litchfield, how are you staying motivated? You know, for me, it's habit, but at the same point, it's, I live a pretty awesome lifestyle right now. And uh, I know that if I stop doing those basic things, my lifestyle will change. And so I guess there's a little bit of fear in there for me. I don't want to have a change, right, in lifestyle. It's good. I want to maintain this. I want to keep getting, you know, if anything, I want it to get better. The only way to do that is to keep working hard. And so that motivation keeps me going. And the other thing is I take a lot of vacations already. You know, I'm always on the road, maybe not as much as Nat, but I try to travel as much as I can. And so those little breaks that I get to take periodically really help me come back to work afterwards, really energized and really motivated. And, you know, I take those vacations very seriously. And when I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, the five of us, I think are in that three W category. We're working when we want, where we want and with whom we want. Um, is that true, Eric Peterson? Are you at, are you at that three W stage? Mm. Mostly. I mean, I, I still do have a full-time job, but, um, you know, the land investing stuff, I would, I would say that, uh, that fits. Okay. When are you going to quit that job or do you want to quit that job? No, I, it's in the works. Uh, probably January I'll be transitioning out of it. So. All right. How do you feel about that? Um, good and bad. I mean, I work from home in, in, everything I do. So, you know, that part's the same, but the part that um, can be a little bit worrisome is just not having, you know, someone else paying a salary for me anymore and just being responsible for it on my own. So, um, you know, I, I believe I can do it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a little nerve wracking to, to step out there and be solely, you know, um, relying on that. Well, Scott Todd did it. Yep. He'll, he'll, he'll motivate you, you know, yep. crazy. Wait, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry. I'll do a Facebook live from the boat. <laughs> there you go. Um, Nat Bruno, how do you avoid shiny object syndrome? How do I avoid shiny object syndrome? Um, Honestly, it is uh, staying focused, staying motivated, like you said. Uh, I oftentimes will book uh, or schedule out a big vacation, uh, like the ski trip 
ski road trip or uh, going to Europe for a month way in advance. So I know that I'm working towards something. Uh, my very first business, I was working 50 hour a week and um, I booked a month in Europe. So I knew I had to uh, systemize my business to the point where I could disappear for a month and I was able to, and I was working five hours a week by the time Europe showed up. And the only call that I ever got or email when I was in Europe was, Hey, where do you want your paycheck deposited? Um, so that, that, uh, that long-term vacation or positive incentive, if you will, uh, really, really motivates me. Yeah. Does anybody, you know, follow like Grant Cardone or, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and be like, well, you know, and have that, that should syndrome. Like th- these guys are working so hard and so consistently hard. Um, it seems like they never take a break. I would almost argue that like they're unhealthy in that, in that sense, but you can't argue with their, you know, their results. Uh, but Nat, can you argue with their results? Cause you question everything. Yeah. So, uh, it's funny. I just watched a video by Gary V yesterday. He was talking about regrets and he's like, the one thing I do not want is regrets for him. It probably would be, he didn't say specifically what he would regret, but if he didn't own the jets, he might regret that the New York jets. Whereas me, I would regret it if I worked too much, if I was constantly working uh 50 hour weeks, uh, I would regret that very much though. Me too. Tate. No, I a hundred percent agree with that. I think there's more to life than that. So that's why this is the best, uh, the best passive income model there is, you know, like you don't have to work 50 hours a week. You can sit down and you can hammer out a couple hours in the evenings. And within a few, you know, within a year or so you're, if you do things right and, and you listen to your coaches and the community and you attend the seminars and the, and boot camp, you can live the lifestyle that you want. I think, don't you say some to the extent of if you, you know, focus now for the next three years, you can live how everybody else wants to live forever or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you'll do for the next three to five years, what other people won't do, yeah, that's you'll it. be able to live the rest of your life with the way other people can't Yeah, you know, be able to do what other people can't do. Um, yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I say this a lot, and I, but I think it's true. If you work in a focused hour a day in this business, a focused hour a day, which means you're not checking email, you're not going on social media. You just put your head down and do the, the two things you really need to do in this business to move forward. The mailing and marketing, let's say, let's get a system done. It will, you know, move the needle. Scott, is that a realistic assessment of time? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think that, you know, um, when, I, when I started, you know, and even today, Mark, I still spend about two hours a day on my business, but there's more to it than what I'm, you know, I, in, in terms of land, there's more to it because I'm just trying to do things, right? Uh, and it's work that I might enjoy. It's, it's tinkering, right? Like today, I spend most of my time like uh, on, on Zapier or, you know, trying to figure out, is there a better way? I play with tools because I have to have all these t- tips of the week. <laughs> so, you know, I'm always playing with, uh, with, with applications. I'm trying to become a better, better me. And so that's where my two hours a day comes in. Uh, and even when I was working my full-time job, I still spent two to three hours a day building my business and I did it uh, in a very focused manner. I think that's what it comes down to is being extremely focused. Yeah. Well, speaking of tips of the week, we get now to uh, go to Eric Peterson's favorite part of this podcast and ask him for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, Eric, and improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Today, it's going to be a book. Um, I am in the process of listening to the book. Uh, it's called Your One Word by Evan Carmichael. Your One um, Word. Mm-hmm. And um, he basically, you know, the whole book is about finding your one word for your life, your business, um, you know, and um, 
building that out into everything you do and that people will buy into that. They'll follow you and, um, you know, um, kind of support you in that, in that sense. Um, so it's, it's an interesting book. Huh? Very cool. Um, you know, uh, the 22 minimal laws of marketing talk about that. Okay. And having that, you know, owning that word in that category. So I think that's, that's a really great book. Um, I think, you know, Scott and I have actually talked about it. Like our one word is freedom, right? Like we want to own that word. Uh, Eric, what's your, what's your word? I'm still working on it. I, I've been kind of mulling over some ideas, but I haven't, I haven't landed on my one word yet. So um, I'm still, still working through it. Well, look, if you want to borrow ours, let us know. <laughs> All right. That's a great, that's a great tip of the week. Uh, Tate Litchfield, are you ready for your tip of the week? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to go ahead of Scott again because I'm sure he's going to claim that I stole his tip once again. But um, I have actually, this week I was uh, playing around on, on Saturday and I didn't have my computer with me and I was trying to create a new actual process and kind of do a little mind map. And I'm trying to come up with and give some background information on an effective way to pay for taxes on properties. And so I was thinking of how to do this and pen and paper. And then basically I decided I needed to come up with some sort of swim lane and swim lane and automate it. So I was looking through uh, the app store and I came across an app called Mindly, M-I-N-D-L-Y. And it's a really cool free app. You can basically download it and make uh, kind of like a bubble chart and it basically says step one is do this and that'll branch out to this and then that. So it's, it's basically kind of a way to create a process like process street, but on your cell phone. So I've been using it for a few days now. I like it because I can export the files. I can share it. I can print them. I don't know. I just kind of find it a cool tool actually. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out Mindly. M-I-N-D-L-Y. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, it's got a free version, but uh, I would recommend they have a purchased version. You can get for like seven bucks or something like that. And it's, it's nice. I like it. So I give it a, a thumbs up. And it's, it's cool because sometimes you, you want to think about your business when you're not in front of the computer or you're up at night laying in bed. And it's a great way to jot down some ideas and some, some uh, I don't know, processes. Very cool. Very cool. Nat Bruno, what's your tip of the week? So you guys know that I'm ambitiously lazy and I hate doing uh, the repetitive tasks over and over again and particularly typing the same things over and over again. So I recommend uh, phraseexpress.com. Oh, uh, fr- let me it check is, this out. Where, where, is this on the App Store? Uh, it's on iOS, it's on Android, it's on Mac, it's on Windows, and Mark, it's free. Oh so, my gosh, my second favorite word. Yeah, buddy. So Jesus. it will insert a text snippet for you into whatever program you want. So a lot of people have heard of like canned responses, but it only works within Gmail. This will work in any window within your computer or your phone. So uh, an example that I use often is uh, when I have notaries that I need to schedule uh, to see if they can close for me in a certain location. I have to email five or six of them sometimes. So instead of writing out five individual emails, I just simply press a few keys on my laptop and a pre-written email just pops out right into Gmail and is sent to the notary. Wow. um, It saves me boatloads of time. I I love it. Now, Okay, iPad app, iPhone app, I'm getting this now. Okay, so this is what I do. Um, I go into settings and keyboards on iOS, and I create a bunch of shortcuts there. Um, But it only works in, like, mail, right? It doesn't work in every... uh, It it doesn't work everywhere. Um, so, yeah, this is awesome. I'm, I'm definitely getting this uh, right now. And, I, and then for my computer, what I use is a text expander, which is also, uh, I think, you know, I think it's five bucks on the App Store. 
Um, but it, it saves so much time. What's the cost on this? This is free. So there's a free mode. It looks like it costs money, but there is a, if you go to download, oh, download there's now. a free mode that you can I download. Like it. I love it. it. What, Scott, what are you using for a text expander? Uh, I use, uh, what's this called? A text? A text. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's what I use. A text. I love A text. Um, in, in, in almost every application on the, on the Mac, it works great. Um, but iOS, this is a really good solution. Um, I'm sure there's an Android version, I would, I would assume, for the three people that use Android. That's me. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm a Windows sweet. guy. I'm a hacker at heart. I can't handle Mac. Uh, I, M- Mark, <laughs> Mark, eject. Could, Where's the ejection? <laughs> Look, I, I, I literally have no idea how he got on this round table now. <laughs> so, that's crazy. All right, well, it's surprising uh, we can even see him. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Zing. So my, uh, wait, Scott, what's your tip of the week? Oh, you, you want to go ahead? You're so excited. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you, you can go. You can go. Uh, Okay, Mark. Listen, um, I got a book. Okay. The book is by Michael Hyatt. If you don't know who Michael Hyatt is, he's a blogger. He's also a former CEO of uh, a book publishing company. The book is called Living Forward, A Proven Plan to Stop Drifting and to Get the Life that You Want. Okay. And basically, you know, this book is really about, you know, kind of everything that we've talked about Uh, like even on this podcast today, which is, you know, you can, if you want to be like a Grant Cardone and, and, you know, work 70, 80 hours a week and that's your why, well then great. No problem. If you, if you just want a simple life, no problem. It's, it's your life. You should plan it the way that you want to get the life that you want and living forward is uh, a great book to help you do that. All right. And it's on audible too. So, even better. Uh, I love it. So, my tip of the week is going to be uh, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting, I think. We'll see what Eric Peterson has to say about it. (laughs) It is cyclops.io. Check out Cyclops. C Y C L O P S dot I O one click video conferencing with screen share on steroids with a physical whiteboard app, no download, no login up to eight people. This is a tremendous way to create systems. It's quick and secure. It's screen sharing on steroids. You can broadcast the physical whiteboard chat bots, Real-time audio transcription. No more taking notes for them. Email or post transcript to Slack. Your meeting gets indexed and becomes searchable. Oh, and by the way, um, it's free. Did I just drop the mic? Cyclops.io? Well, Mark, if it's free, how is it going to yeah. be? How, how are they going to sustain it? How is it livable? Come on, Mark. That, that is, that like is my That's your that, policy. That is, that is my policy, and I'm sure they will monetize it soon. Well, it remains to be tested. It yeah. remains to be tested. I mean, they, they could just go away tomorrow, Mark. They, they, I agree. They could. They could. But I have a feeling they have a really good uh, – they have a good solution here. People will Oh, look, it's gone it. already. The website's already gone. What? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> if, I mean, if you're willing to risk it and host our next uh, round table on it, <laughs> Then, then we can give an actual feedback on it. But until then, it's just a look, good look idea. at Eric. Look at Eric. Eric's not saying a word. You know he wants to, Mark. But you know he's letting Tate and I carry the heavy weight here. Eric, go ahead. Let let loose. It's a great tip. Stand I stand up for yourself, Eric. Stand up for yourself. Give it to him. I've got no comments. I'm not going to tear down anyone else's tip of the week. Oh, They're all yeah, that good. Was the low. That was he's, low. See, now taking when, you know the what? high road. The Mark. high road. You know what? I respect it. When we go low with our tips of the week, he goes high. But Nat Bruno has not chimed in yet. So, Nat, 
Cyclops.io, what do you think? Definitely, definitely interesting. I got a question for you. Why is it named Cyclops? I don't know. I can guess. Got him. Um, I have no idea. But I I do think that there is something here and that uh, Zoom could be in trouble if Cyclops gains traction. True, true. So... Scott, it's got the same kind of uh, thing as Zoom.us, but it's got the different price point. You know, Slack started out is free. Now, you know, they'll, they'll have a freemium model. They're just getting yeah, users I, right I, now. I think, uh, I, like, I don't think it's a bad. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a good tip of the week. Uh, we got to mess with it. I do, like with the, it. I do like the, um, how do I do the physical whiteboard? That'd be, that's kind of cool. See? Is it just a whiteboard? Like a, an online whiteboard? Mm, I don't know. We've got to play with it. Uh, like we'll it. tinker. Point, I, I point could camera come back whiteboard, enhance content using computer vision, draw and add text markups, take snapshot, email or post to Slack. It also I, like So have, you can I broadcast might, your physical whiteboard. I might have to mess, start messing with this and stay up to like two o'clock in the morning and let you know tomorrow <laughs> and then use it for my tip of the week next week. Uh, that might happen. Okay. I, no guarantee, but you know, at least I'll be able to say like, this is how I used it, Mark. Fast, easy, secure, and an open platform. I don't know. Have I, you I used it, Mark? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, not yet. Okay. Not yet. All right. I will tell you though, Eric. Mar- Mark was extremely excited about this uh, this tip of the week. He he uh, actually voxed me. Like I don't know what day was it, Mark? Like Wednesday like la- or Thursday? last week? Yeah. Like he was like, I got this one. No one can claim it. It's mine. It's good, right? It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. So, I-, I think I've really stepped up with my tips of the weeks. So, getting better, Mark. I've get I'm getting better. It's, you know, it's very hard. So I want to think. <laughs> Really yeah, hard. I, well, I yeah. want to thank all the listeners and uh, please, if you're enjoying these roundtable podcasts, just do us a little favor, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. Um, it really helps. So uh, I want to thank Nat Bruno, Eric Peterson, Tate Litchfield, Scott Todd for joining us on the roundtable. And uh, should we try to do it, Scott, or... Let's go, Mark. Sure. You guys ready? Yep. Ready? One, two, two, three. three. Let freedom freedom ring. ring. Wow. Wow. Speaking of freedom ringing, uh, Scottsdale boot camp is full, um, but Orlando is filling up fast. We're halfway full for an October boot camp. So if you want to get to the Orlando room, uh, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and register now. All right. Also, if you want to learn more about flight school, um, the toolkit, any of the training, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks, guys.